<laughs> I'm just letting you know, just in case you, you know, <laughs> so you don't say anything weird or do anything weird. I feel like this is like okay, super close. You're what? <laughs> we'll come back to it after. Whew. I have so much to share with you guys. Waiting for everybody to join in. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Happy Thursday. I know it's weird because we normally do this on a Wednesday, but yesterday was not. Yeah, Wednesday wasn't cooperating with me. So, um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. And you know me, I'm not a fan of just sitting down talking to nobody or sitting down just talking for the sake of talking. If it's me and one other person or me by myself, then I will just end the live and we can pick it up next week, Wednesday. Um, because I know that everyone kind of gets into a routine and kind of gets used to the rhythm of things. So we'll, I'll give it about 10 minutes. If nobody joins in, I am totally cool with that. Um, and like I said, we'll just go live next week. But uh, I am going to post this. So in the interest of just posting to let you guys know a couple of things. Um, so the podcast broke 10,000 plays. Um, <laughs> thank you. The podcast broke 10,000 plays uh, yesterday. Um, so yay. <laughs> Congratulations to feline um you know of course that success of that is attributed to everyone who listens to the pork podcast supports the podcast like shares comments who has subscribed to the podcast it's really interesting because um i post really early in the morning i think like somewhere between six and seven in the morning and it's funny to me that when i thank you <laughs> thank you thank you thank you um Tims and Stilettos, that's another great podcast that you guys should definitely check out uh, with Davina and Armar, um, two great hosts, friends of mine. Um, but the success of the podcast is definitely attributed to um, everyone who listens. I'm always amazed that when I post it first thing in the morning, um, the immediate number of listeners, I'm not going to say how many, but it, it just always surprises me. Um, you know, everyone who tunes into Wet Wednesdays, everyone who shares and all that kind of stuff. So thank you so much for um, helping me break my goal of 10,000 um, plays. So I'm going to be doing a calendar giveaway on Valentine's Day uh, to thank everyone. It's not going to be anything elaborate where you have to, you know, jump through hoops and, and skip rope and all these kind of things. It's just going to be very basic. Um, you know, if you're following the podcast page, that's great because you're already here. It really would just be to like tag two people um, and every person that you tag will be an entry into winning a free boudoir calendar. Um, but outside of that, um, what else? I have a website that is under construction currently. I'm hoping... Um, not hoping it will be launched within a week so you will have access to me in a different way there is going to be three um, different platforms within the website so there will be merch available the calendars will be available um, easy access to get to the podcasts and all that kind of stuff anyhow um, as I've said before I'm not a rambling kind of person I'm not a fan of rambling if it ends up being me and two people in this conversation um i'm i'm not going to stay because i don't want to waste anybody's time or mine so i'm going to give it 10 minutes max if there aren't more than two people in the chat i'm going to leave the conversation until next week and um yeah we'll see how it goes hello everybody who is joining in sorry for like the super duper close-up of my face <laughs> so um <laughs> I was just mentioning to everyone or thanking everyone for helping me reach my goal of 10,000 10, plays. We broke 10,000 plays um, on the podcast. So so for me, that's, um, that's a pretty, pretty, pretty big milestone. So um, it's hot. A lot of his mercy, it's hot. How is everyone doing? Um, I wanted tonight to be a wellness check-in and to also talk about self-care and the importance of sorry not self-care after care and the importance <laughs> curvy queen hello gorgeous thank you so much i appreciate you um yeah we were going to have a conversation about the importance of um after care whether it's after care um, from sex or whether it's after care from um a scene or having a session 
um, and the importance of aftercare and what aftercare looks like. Um, and it's, it's definitely an individual thing, but I wanted to discuss it more because uh, one of my friends had asked me a question about spanking um, and impact play. And I had given him some, you know, tips and pointers on um, good techniques for impact play and, and for spanking, but also the importance of um, aftercare. Because your body goes through a lot when you're doing um, different scenes and different sessions. So if we, if we take just impact play by itself, where it is, um, you know, a spanking session, a paddling session, a punching session, um, you know, whatever it is, that your emotions and your energy are on high. Um, you know, adrenaline is running through your body, your pain receptors are on 10, um, and, and all these different emotions that are going through your body. And not having proper aftercare can cause a lot of emotional trauma um, and can also cause physical trauma as well. Um, have a great night. I hope you sleep well. <laughs> um, so some of the ways that I suggest, uh, you know, one of the things that I suggest for aftercare, especially when it's something that involves pushing your pain threshold, is definitely um, caresses and massages. So for me, I'm not a person who particularly likes um, physical touch, like after sex or after, um, you know, certain sessions. But I do think that it's very important, especially if the person that you're having um, the, the time with or the session with, you know, regardless of what it is. So if we're, if we're talking specifically about a spanking session or impact play, um, it's important to stay connected to the person and help them come back down off of the adrenaline rush, adrenaline rush and helping them come back down off of the high um, of, of having... <laughs> been in a situation um, of impact play or a session of impact play. Um, I know for me personally, um, I like pushing my pain threshold. I like spanking sessions, but when they're done, the sting of your skin, you know, there are certain things that you don't want touching your skin um, because it makes it more painful, but not in a pleasant type of way. So don't use cold water, use warm water, use a warm cloth or a warm rag. Um, if you're going to use some sort of ointment or balm, make sure that it's warmed. Either, you know, just rub it gently in your hand so that it warms up to room temperature or warms up to the temperature of your body and gently massage the person's um, skin, especially in the areas in which there's been the most impact, where you see that there's bruising, where you see that there's swelling, whether you see that there are welts or lines or marks in the person's skin. Um, massage gently. You're, you're definitely not going to you know, lay your hands on them the same in the same manner as when you were doing impact play, there, there shouldn't be any force involved. There shouldn't be any um, aggression involved. There shouldn't be any, um, there shouldn't be any pain involved in the aftercare. The point of aftercare is to help the person come back down to a, a, a normal threshold, to, to help them come back down off the emotional high, to help them come back down after, you know, the, after pushing their pain boundaries and, and what have you. For some people, um, these sessions can be really emotional and people may cry afterwards. Um, and sometimes what they need in those moments is for you to just hug them or hold them so that they have that emotional release and so that they have time to allow themselves to emotionally come back down from the high, from the adrenaline high, from the emotional, from being emotionally um, wound up. I think sometimes people get lost in the thought that, you know, um, they're tough, they can take it, it's impact play. If they've, if, if they've taken a spanking, why do they need to, you know, be hugged and caressed afterwards? But the point is, you know, you're pushing your body into a space that it doesn't normally reside. You're pushing your body into a, into a space that it doesn't normally occupy. And so when you intensify, you know what it's like? It's like being on a roller coaster, right? And you're at the top of the roller coaster, you're going up, 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 and there's this expectation that, you know, something momentous. How did you bring it up the first time you got spanked? Um, I I actually asked. Um, and it was one of those really weird things because you know like when you were a kid and you used to get beaten? <laughs> I don't know if you got spanked when you were a kid, but when I was a kid and I used to get beaten, um, I remember when my mom would hit me with her hands that it, it didn't really, it didn't really do anything. 
Um, but when she would spank me with the belt, and this was when I was a kid, right? There was a weird sensation that started off like as a stinging and then dulled into pain and then dulled into nothingness really quickly. And so when I used to get spanked, I think it would bother her because the, the pain responses that she was trying to elicit from me, which is the bawling, the screaming and the crying, she never really got that. So in order for me to get her to stop, I would have to give her that to make her feel like she had done something with her time and her energy in order to stop. Um, when I got older, I, I met a man who was into, in, like entirely into BDSM. Like he had the kitten caboodle, he had the paddles, he had the crops, he had the cat and nine tails, he had lubes and bombs and pegs and plugs and like he had all manners of things that I had never tried and had never um, even like it never even crossed my mind because I didn't really know anything about that that world um, and he opened my eyes up to a whole new <laughs> way of life um, and so in conversation with him I asked him one day if he would do a spanking session with me and you know we we had discussions about it and he's like you know are you sure and I'm like I'm not but I'm curious because I want to know if I have what not if I have I want to know what my pain threshold is or if this is something that can actually excite me or bring me to orgasm and um he agreed you know we talked about safe words um we talked about aftercare I'm like what is aftercare he's like you know like you're gonna need me like to hug you I'm like no I'm not. <laughs> and little did I know. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely, definitely needed that when it was said and done. Um, and he was a big guy. And I mean, you guys know me like I'm I'm five foot. <laughs> hey, Chris is up. Um, I'm five foot six. I'm a, I'm a fairly, you know, I'm not small. I'm a fairly sturdy gal. Um, I was definitely smaller than this at the time. And he was big, like he was like six foot four, you know, like close to 300 pay was he was a big man um and it was one of the greatest experiences i've ever had and and shocked the shit out of me because the way how i orgasm from the the pain from the way that he spoke to me from the way that he took time building up the pain you know it wasn't and so i think that people have this misconception that you go in and you just get like it's just and and that's not what it is there there are different ways that you apply pressure you know um the conversation i was having with a friend of mine you know that feels very different than than that right and you can even hear the differences in the way that it sounds so with doing the session with him and going through the highs and lows of pain and and you know pushing my boundaries and pushing my threshold and and just at the point where i i think i'm done you know, I'm saying to him, okay, a little bit more until I get to that point where I know I can't go any further. And so, you know, use the safe word and, and everything kind of stops, right? As stop Marie, Samantha. <laughs> um, so that was my first experience with it. And, and as much as I thought I wouldn't need aftercare because I'm tough and I'm strong and I'm like, I was just spanking, the way how I was emotional um, and the feeling of coming down from that adrenaline rush, the feeling of coming down from that high, you know, when he took off his gear and um, he went and he got like a warm cloth and he laid like a warm cloth across my ass and, and the back of my thighs. And he basically just laid down beside me and just like rubbed my back and rubbed my shoulders. And I remember starting to cry and him saying to me like, it's okay. I'm like, no, it's not. Why am I crying? That's okay, crying. I'm not crying. And I, I wasn't crying because it hurt. I wasn't crying because it hurt because the, in the entire session, I didn't shed a single tear. There was a lot of moaning. There was a lot of groaning. There was a lot of grunting. There was a lot of, you know what I mean? Like sighing and, and those kind of um, like, because I was sexually wound up. But when everything was said and done and when we were just laying there and not like laying in the wet spot, it wasn't after sex or anything. It was just literally after a session with him, I cried because coming down from the emotional high, you know, with my pain receptors going back to normal, with my adrenaline, you know, subsiding and going back to normal, it was like this huge wave of re relief. And it, it's it's like, it, it's almost like the feeling of holding your breath and then you let go and you're like, 
like you really feel like you're breathing for the first time. Um, it was it was that kind of feeling, right? So the analogy I was making before, it's like being on a ro roller coaster, you know, like you're on the roller coaster, there's like this, this knot that forms in your stomach, because you know, like it's going up, it's building, it's building, it's building, you know, it's building and, and you, you get to the top. And you know, when you get to the top, there's that drop and that sudden rush. And it's, it's all your emotions going crazy. Adrenaline is on a million and you're hanging on for dear life because you're, you're you know, your, your, your mind is going, your stomach is going, you're trying to breathe, you're trying to gain control. Like all these things are happening emotionally and mentally and physically all at one time. That's, that's kind of what, um, I draw a parallel to with, with different sessions, right? Especially the ones that involve impact play. And okay, so you see, like when the when the roller coaster ride is done, and you get to the very end, nobody gets off the ride immediately. You kind of sit there for a couple of seconds, collecting yourself, gathering your thoughts, making sure that your knees are not going to buckle underneath you, making sure that your you know your feet are steady before you actually get up and exit the ride. It's the same sort of thing, right? Before you get up and leave, especially if it's with somebody that you know has a caring energy or caring spirit, spend time with that person, allowing them to care for you or provide aftercare. And again, it can be something as simple as getting a warm rag and toweling your body down. It can be something as simple as warming up, you know, room temperature, some lotion in your hands, and gently massaging, you know, the the, the surfaces of the person's body that took the the brunt of the impact. So their ass, the back of their thighs their lower back, you know, wh wherever on their body it is. Um, the point of aftercare is to help the person emotionally and mentally and physically come back down to a safe level and to come back down and, and to bring themselves back down to, you know, like a plateau almost. Um, I know somebody else, they said for them that self-care is cooking um, eating after impacts play, eating after a session and definitely hydrating is really important. Um, I know some people like, you know, if, if, if I'm the person who's providing, um, the pain, if I'm the person who is, uh, you know, engaging, so I'm the, the giver, not the receive the recipient, then, you know, when everything is said and done, I will make sure that there's a warm towel for the person to, you know, just kind of help soothe their body a little bit. I know that, you know, I'm, I'm definitely a little bit more affectionate, a little bit more gentle and making sure that, you know, I caress them and I will definitely make them something to eat because I think it's important for you to replenish your strength and replenish your fluids when you're done. Um, even under normal circumstances of when you're, you know, it's just uh, intimacy, like after you guys have had like a great fuck session, you can still practice aftercare. Aftercare is not restricted to or limited to the hardcore sessions of, you know, doing impact play or, um, you know, electro play, if you're doing knife play, if you're doing fire play, if you're doing wax play. Aftercare is not necessarily restricted to those um, those, uh, situations alone, aftercare is meant for any situation where there's an emotional high, an emotional rush, you know, lots of adrenaline rushing and, and this, that, and the third, um, you know, and, and helping the person to come back down from that high is really important. I don't know that men experience it as much as women do. I could be wrong, but for some reason, you know, please feel free to tell me, Hey, Dora Coleman, what's up? Um, I am Liberty Phoenix, my darling. Um, I, I do think that women require aftercare more than men do, but it's not to say that men don't require aftercare, especially if they are the recipient, they're the ones who are on the receiving end of impact play. Um, so I've, I've done ruler, ruler, ruler sessions or spanking sessions with a ruler. Um, don't judge me. So basically, um, because I like to inflict pain on people, I am a sadist. Um, I'm really good at convincing people to allow me <laughs> to help them push and explore and push some more their personal boundaries. BDSM just isn't my cup of tea. That's okay. BDSM isn't for, for everybody. BDSM isn't for everybody. Um, but you know what though? I think the way that people think about BDSM may be wrong. I think that when people think about BDSM, they're thinking about 
like the hardcore, the extreme, like, you know, um, the mummification where you're completely wrapped in plastic and, you know, maybe you have a small breathing tube that's, you know, that allows you to breathe just so, you know, for them, extreme is being put into like a pony suit and being treated like a pony all day long to them. BDSM is being put into a dog suit and being treated like a dog all day long, being put on a collar, leash, and so on and so forth. Um, BDSM is very broad. And as much as you think you don't like BDSM, I promise you there are some aspects of BDSM, like impact play, that you do enjoy. Um, we just don't think of it as the same way because you separate the BDSM lifestyle from what you do in the bedroom. Like, it, it shouldn't be... Yes, there is a divide because there are some extreme types of BDSM, but I promise you in most sexual activity, there's some level of BDSM. Um, BDSM is all about trust and pleasure. Absolutely. Dora Coleman, at some point I can't push past the pain threshold if it is applied in the same spot repeatedly. And that is one of the reasons why I say that it's really important to provide cell, uh, to provide aftercare. Okay, so for me, I find like with spanking, if it's in one prolonged space, um, you know, as I said to someone before, like when you're... After a while, it starts to get sore. But I find that when you do this type of motion and you move to another space that's maybe a little bit over from there, not far away, but close enough that you can still feel what's happening in, in, in the impact zone. I find that the caresses in between definitely help to keep your skin from being like, you know, that when your pain receptors are on like a million and they're like right on edge and you're like, no, 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 somewhere else, somewhere else, somewhere else. I find that when they take time in between and caress the areas that they're, they're applying pressure to or inflicting um, impact on, it helps soothe it a little bit. Um, Chris, you can try it on me though, just being funny. Please don't jill me, but I'll be back if I die by a beautiful woman, don't kill me. I don't have nothing to say to you. <laughs> I don't I don't have nothing to say to you. Okay, so my impact play uh, scenario I was going to give you. So this was a few years ago, um, a man that I was dating, as I said, I like to inflict pain. Um, my, my primary fetish is biting. Um, I like to bite and I like to be bitten. I more so like to bite. Um, I don't draw blood if I can help it. And if I do draw blood, it's with consent. Um, and of course there are conversations that have to happen because, you know, you have to make sure that people are safe and yada, yada, yada. But generally when I bite, it's with the intention of leaving, um, teeth impressions, with the intention of leaving bruises. It's with the intention of you know, it, inflicting pain, but not in such a way that you're going to hate it. You know, we make it a little bit fun. But on this particular occasion, um, I did a uh, spanking with a ruler on his dick. So what I did was I gave him head uh, to the point where, you know, he was rock hard. And then I said to him, um, I want to spank you. He's like, no. I said, not on your ass. He's like, oh, where do you want to spank me? I said, I want to beat your dick. He's like, why? <laughs> like, I just want to see how you respond to it. And if you, you know, I'll, I'll reward you. There's a, there has to be a reward, right? So he's on hard. I'm holding, you know, his, his dick at the end. The head is here, gripped in my, in my fist. And I had a ruler. And I literally beat along his dick and I watched his face. So you start off, you know, and I'm looking at his in his response and, you know, his response is whatever his response is and, and it gives me pleasure. So then I apply a little bit more pressure and I say to him, is that fine? And his response is, yes, that's good. So I keep it at that pace for a little bit longer. And then I ask him, can I apply pressure? And so this is the back and forth because, you know, like as, as I said, at that time, I wasn't as versed in, um, you know, BDSM and, and, you know, practicing certain things. But in having that dialogue with him, every time we got to a point where he thought he would stop because the pain was too much, I would ask him, can we push just a little bit more? Um... I, you're consenting for me to kill you? Listen to me. Don't put that on record, eh? <laughs> Little most you come up missing and then they're going to come look for me to say, 
that I did you something. Don't put that on record. Come delete that comment out of the chat, please, and thank you kindly. Um, but we did we did this session for um it probably was about an, a half an hour. Um, and like I said, even when we got to the point where I thought that he had reached his max with the pain, he pushed himself a little bit more. And my and what I asked him was, you know, if you feel like you can go a little bit further go a little bit further. Don't just stop because it's the regular amount of pain and your body's like, mm, we don't like this. If you know that it's a regular amount of pain, but you're not dying and you feel like you can go a little bit further, go a little bit further with me. And so because he pushed himself, because he pushed his boundaries, because he expanded his threshold, that excited me into rewarding him. Miss said, I got a warm towel. I toweled him down to just kind of like bring down, you know, the sensations. And then I massaged him with my mouth to thank him for being such a willing participant and for being such a good sport. You know, so for, for him, that was his, that was the aftercare that I chose to give him, you know, a mouth massage to soothe the pain that I had inflicted on him um, and to thank him for being such a willing participant. You know, like I said, though, for other people, um, you know, aftercare could be a warm massage, it could be a warm bath, it could be a warm shower, it could be cooking for the person, it could be bringing a beverage for them, it could be conversation, you know. Aftercare can be whatever it is that makes the person feel good and makes the person feel like they are coming back down to a normal emotional state of being. And it's important to help the person get back to that normal state of emotional being so that they don't stay conflicted, so that their emotions are not on high, so that they're able to think clearly, you know what I mean, like post-nut clarity, but this is post-pain clarity, so that they're able to, um, it, it may sound crazy, but so that they're able to drive or go wherever it is that they need to go after leaving you, you know? When you do, a, a particularly like with, with impact play and with pain, um, you know, and, or even, you know, asphyxiation play, breath play, whatever it is, when you have pushed a person's limits and you've gotten the person so wound up that their emotions are like up here, if they try to function, it could be catastrophic. I know for me, when my, when my, you know, emotions are on a million, either after having like a good set impact session or having a good fuck session, I can't drive, go nowhere because I can't think straight. You know what I mean? Like my brain, it's like, you know, like the, 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 I'm trying to think when you shake something and you see it shaking around inside or like a, a snow globe, <laughs> perfect example. My brain is like a snow globe after. So like, you know, you shake the snow globe and everything is floating around, floating around, floating around, floating around, floating around, floating around. That's what it's like inside your head when after impact play or after an intense sex session, and then when you put the globe down and everything starts to float and come back down to the bottom and then it, it normalizes and you're able to see the scene inside the snow globe, that is what aftercare is helping you to achieve inside yourself. It's helping the snow globe that's been sh shaken around, which is your body, which is your emotions, which is your, your, your pussy, which is your dick, like your ass. It, it, it's, it's bringing all the emotions, it's bringing all the pleasure, it's bringing all the pain and all the receptors from the top of being shaken up in the snow globe and giving it an opportunity to come back down to normal and settle so that you can see the scene inside the snow globe. It's helping you to come back to a balanced place within yourself so that you're able to function. Um, and it's really, it's really important. So, so anybody who is engaging, especially in impact play, in any type of BDSM, it is imperative that you help your partner come back down to a normal space emotionally and mentally by providing aftercare for them. And the best way that you can do that is just asking them what they need and they will tell you. Um, as I said, for me, I'm not a super want to cuddle and emotional, you know, affection. For me, aftercare is if you just bring me a warm blanket and put it over, you know, my midsection and just allow me to kind of lay there for a minute and spread out <laughs> and breathe. And if you bring me a really good beverage, for me, that's my perfect aftercare. Um, as I said, aftercare varies. For some people, it's it's about eating. So one, one person will cook, 
Sometimes it's, it's having a shower with the person that you've just had the session with, if, if you have that type of bond or relationship. Sometimes um, it's, it's just about laying there, having quiet conversation about the highs and lows of the session, the highs and lows of the interaction. Um, if it is a situation where you're a, a dom and sub and this is someone that you've gone to or someone that you have um, tasked to provide a service for you, you can ask them to provide aftercare or ask them as part of their service if they provide aftercare. You want to avoid people who don't because then you're going to be left struggling with that feeling. If the person is your dom, if the person is your person, if the person is somebody that you have or maintain a fairly regular relationship with and um, you know, you know that you're going to have an intense session with that person, have a conversation with them first about providing aftercare for you and what your aftercare looks like. Or if you are the one doing the session with the person, ask them if they are going to require aftercare and what that means to them and what that looks like. Um, there is no one stop solution for it. There is no one way to provide aftercare. It really depends on the person that you're engaging with and what their 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 needs are. Um, be prepared for tears. If you're not a person who's, you know, necessarily into crying and, and all that kind of stuff where you get weirded out about it, by it, just know <laughs> that they're not crying because you've hurt them, that the person is not crying because they want you to feel bad. The person is not crying because they're trying to trigger you emotionally. The person is crying because they are coming down from an emotional high. Their endorphins are trying to normalize. Their serotonin levels are trying to normalize. Their adrenaline levels are trying to normalize. And that takes a lot out of a person. And so oftentimes what will end up happening is the person's natural response is to cry. Don't feel bad. <laughs> if a person has cried after you've had a session together and you know that they're not dying from pain and you know that they don't have to be rushed to the hospital, that is a good sign that the person has enjoyed the session and that you brought them all the way up and now they're coming all the way back down, but you need to catch them. I tell Butterfly what is going on. How are you? How are you? Um, I, I'm really bad at... <laughs> reading the comments or going back up and reading the comments so please forgive me perfect example thank you thank you thank you everybody who has joined the chat everyone who has come in and come out of the chat i appreciate you this of course is wet wednesdays but on a thursday because yesterday okay so what happened yesterday evening ah <sighs> boy <laughs> so everybody who knows me knows i like to cook this is gonna be a really quick story and so out of utter laziness yesterday, I bought um, frozen store-bought wings, but not the ones that are already kind of like cooked and you just toss them in the oven and they cook the rest of the way. These ones, for whatever reason, I wasn't paying attention. These ones were more like raw, but prepared. I don't know what that means. So whatever factory they're in... <laughs> New beginning, my mixtape is out on all platforms. J-Man from EC, congratulations on uh, putting out your mixtape. Whoever's in the chat, definitely go and check him out or her out. I'm sorry, I don't know. Yeah, I'm assuming you're a man. Um, no disrespect. <laughs> so anyway, so yesterday I made these wings and, you know, just something said to me like, you know, AJ, I don't know. This is not it. <laughs> but I ate them anyways. And within five minutes, I remember saying to my daughter, I don't feel so good. And yeah, that was the start to a horrible um, evening. And, you know, instead of, of trying to go live and probably having to make a mad dash to the bathroom because my stomach was acting crazy, um, I just figured I would postpone till today. So that's the long and short of it. I am definitely, you know, feeling feeling better today <laughs> um i hope that everyone is well like i said this wasn't meant to be a whole long um conversation i just wanted to come in and chat with you guys for a little bit and just talk about the importance of aftercare um i'm, I'm noticing for myself as i get older with you know sexual in engagement and sexual interaction being that much more intense i'm finding that um i am requiring aftercare more so um, Tim's and Stilettos, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is crazy because I remember, was it last week? I think last week I wanted to go live as well on Wednesday. End up with a migraine. Um, 
And then, uh, I don't know. Anyhow, um, in a couple of days, it's going to be Valentine's Day. I know some of you do not celebrate Valentine's Day. I know some of you celebrate Galentine's Day where you get together with your girlfriends and you know, you, you, you cook two food and get dressed up sexy and, and hang out with one another. So to everyone who is celebrating Valentine's Day, to everybody who's celebrating Galentine's Day, um, wishing you lots of love. If anyone is interested in checking out my OnlyFans, um, I have it on a 35% discount. I think it's 35 or 40, one of the two. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to check the my OnlyFans out, that is on a special until uh, just after Valentine's Day. And then I'm going to run it again in March for Steak and Blowjob Day. So, you know. Um, and as <laughs> Samantha said... You know, if you're if you're celebrating Valentine's Day, ladies, bust it wide open. Um, how long have you been in a lifestyle? Woo, that's a very good question. Um, I was first introduced to the lifestyle, I would say, a little over twenty years ago. Um, and and it's interesting, right? Because it's like my the whole beginning of my adult life, and and. You know, being a mom and being a wife and all these kind of things. Um, I didn't know nothing about any of these things. I, you know, you're in your early 20s. You're still exploring life and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, he and I, you know, things were very routine with us. And, you know, it, it, it was what it was. Um, I didn't buy my first vibrator or my first dildo until we broke up. Go figure, right? Um, and that was when I was like 28. And you know, everybody knows I'm an old lady now. Um, and, and that's kind of where the curiosity started for me. But like I said, I, I met this man. Um, his name was Steven. Uh, <laughs> woo! I remember him really well. Jeez, Lord. And he was my he was my introduction to BDSM. Like prior to that, you know, like I kind of, you know, seen things here and there, um, but never really knew too much about the lifestyle. So I met him. And, you know, we started exploring and he was very versed. Like he had started um, getting into the lifestyle when he was a teenager. Um, and then from him, I met another gentleman who uh, threw lifestyle parties. Which again, I knew nothing about. So that was my introduction into like mansion parties, sex parties, um, you know, different like voyeur sessions, I was afforded an opportunity because of the people that I knew um, to be able to go to different events and not have to participate like I could just watch. And they didn't really, it wasn't like a spectator sport. You know what I mean? It wasn't like going and watching a football game. Generally, when you go to a mansion party or a lifestyle party, the expectation is that you participate in some way, shape or form. Um, but because of the people that I knew and people knew that I was with them, there wasn't really an expectation that I actively engaged. I remember uh, one, you know, party that I went to, um, this woman politely came up to me and she kissed me full on the mouth. And I, I was like, I didn't, I didn't pull away and I didn't move. I was like, Oh, hi. And she's like, you've got great breasts. And like, she literally did this like with her hands. And I was like, Oh, thank you. Um, she's like, you know, do you want to come play with me and my husband? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm just, you know, kind of looking around. Um, but Stephen, Stephen opened me up to and introduced me to a whole lot of stuff that I did not know. Um, he introduced me to um, bondage in terms of uh, chains and handcuffs. He introduced me to impact play in terms of spanking sessions um, he introduced me to, I'm a very vocal person. So having like a ball gag in my mouth so that I wasn't able to talk, I could only like moan and grunt and all those kind of stuff. Um, um, sensory deprivation. He introduced me to blindfolding and then me not knowing where he was in proximity to me, but then, you know, um, touching me at different moments, using vibrators at different moments, you know, poking and prodding. Um, um, Wh the Wharton's wheel, the, it looks like the, um, 
if you ever guys ever watch western movies the little wheel thingy that's on the back of your boot <laughs> ah life with keely my sweetheart my darling noir haven what's up guys so um you know doing uh using the wharton wheel on my skin and and you know uh poking and, and prodding which is one of the reasons why you know like i like um like i'll poke myself with a pin or a needle and and not really be freaked out or worried about it um <laughs> But I would, I would say that I've been familiar with the lifestyle for at least the last 20 years. Um, the journey that I'm on right now, though, is to find one person, maybe two. Maybe three. <laughs> you know what? Maybe four because I like even numbers and four is my number. But to find like um, a group of people that I can engage with. And it's really interesting because I know that there are um, like there are clubs and there are scenes here in Toronto. But I feel like what's better suited for me is being in the U.S. where there are more, um, you know, environments for uh, people of color primarily. Um, those are, are more so the spaces that I would like to be in. And I don't necessarily know, like the spaces here are more, um, let's say multicultural. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, and for all the parties I've ever gone to, for all the events I've ever attended, um, and, and that kind of thing, it's, it's primarily people who are, who are, who are not of color that um are engaged in the lifestyle here in in toronto i could be wrong um there might be you know a cave or a dungeon somewhere that somebody hasn't mentioned to me um <laughs> listen if i if i come to the states like i'm gonna be there for a long time rolling about and, and exploring and seeing what's going on um but there are definitely some events and venues that I want to uh, check out in the States once life is open back up and they've opened the borders again. But I would, I would say, um, a little over 20 years. Um, I'm very open-minded when it comes to, to certain things. And I, and I've just, I've determined about myself that, you know, there are certain things that I want to try. Like I want to try, um, kidnapping. Kidnapping and consensual rape are two of my, um, fetish fantasy BDM BDSM lifestyle um, scenes that I would I am open to definitely trying um, as I said I, I like impact play um, I am a sadist I like inflicting pain primarily biting and that kind of stuff hey Mo <laughs> I am feeling much better thank you Mr. Trini BBC what's his guan in <laughs> um, but the main point is <laughs> When you're engaging in any type of scene, when you're engaging in any sort of play, and even when you're engaging in sexually intense um, interactions with someone, having aftercare or providing aftercare is really important. Um, and again, you know, it's, it's simply a matter of asking that person what type of aftercare they require. Um, consensual rape is absolutely crazy. And, and it's it's funny because like, I'm aggressive by nature, but there's something that becomes very, man, I don't even should be putting on my business like this, but because <laughs> we're family, because we're peoples. Um, I feel like, yeah, like I'm, I'm naturally aggressive, but in those moments where that person is even more dominant than me and it starts to feel like that, you know, come give it to me. Like, no, I'm not giving you shit. If you want it, come take it, you know, kind of thing. And they actually come for it. And this requires like tearing off your panty, you know, holding you down and, and taking it. There's something very intensely exciting about that. But you have to be careful because, you know, as I said, it it, it if it's not consensual, then it's actually rape and, and there's like a fine line. Um and, and you don't wanna you don't wanna send mixed signals to somebody like that needs to be communicated, especially rape play and kidnap you know, kidnapping. Um that needs to be communicated to the person that they're this is a consensual because that has the propensity to go sideways real fast and for people to get in trouble real quick. Uh, trouble Mo, what's up? How are you? Sort of like when you put up a fight. Yes, yes, yes. Agreed, Dora. Yeah, you know, you, you put up a struggle. But like for me, for my, like I want, 
<laughs> so I want the struggle where I'm putting up a fight, but like you're really gripsing me up. Like I want to be bruised at the end of it. I want you to smack me around. So like, not like super slap, like, you know, where I have a black eye and I'm, you're punching me, but you know, like, you know, smack me around kind of thing. Like, let me know that you're, you're taking it. And right. I am Liberty Phoenix. Absolutely. A safe word is mandatory. And the person that you're engaging with needs to hear that safe word. There's, it's non-negotiable. It's not a, are you sure, you know, babe, we're having so much fun. You sure you want to use the safe word? No. The second the safe word is used, everything stops. It, it's not up for discussion. It's not up for negotiation. There's no conversation about it. Once the safe word comes into play, that is everybody's cue to stop everything that is happening. Plain and simple. It's non-negotiable. It's non-negotiable. So definitely with certain types of um, play... You have to make sure that it's consensual. There's a conversation that has to take place beforehand. And definitely there, there has to be a safe word in place so that all parties involved know when to stop. Um, but even in those moments, even, you know, even if it's a situation where there isn't impact. Um, so let's say it's a kidnapping scene where you've been tied to a chair you know, and somebody is interrogating you, there's bright lights sh shining in your face. And, you know, it's it's all adrenaline, like you're on, your adrenaline is on 10. Even in those types of scene where there is no, not, there isn't necessarily a physical interaction, there still is re aftercare required. Because, again, your emotions are on 10, your adrenaline is on 10. Especially if it's a scene that you've set up. So let's say it's the kidnapping, a kidnapping scene. So this is a scene that you've set up. Whoever it is that you've trust, you trust, you've given this person pre-consent to just snatch you up whenever, wherever, however, you know, and because you're not necessarily going to know when it's coming, like you've given the person, okay, like I'm off this week, so this would be a good week to, you know, but they don't tell you when they're coming. <laughs> like they just come and they snatch you, you know, um, you know what's going on, but at the same time, like you, you do get freaked out by the fact that, you know, someone has, has put you in the back of a man, there's a hood over your head, you don't know where the fuck you're going. Um, you know, you know that the, the intention is not for them to hurt you, but they're definitely going to do their best to scare the shit out of you. And your emotions, your adrenaline, your serotonin levels, like everything is going to be on 100. <laughs> um so again, even in those moments where there isn't physical touch involved, where there isn't sexual touch involved, you still need aftercare because you still need to be able to come back down from that high and you need to do it in a safe way. Simple. Great. Right. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I hope that everyone is well. Um, you know, I'm appreciative of you guys tuning in. To listen to me chat my fucker every week i appreciate the support i appreciate the comments and the engagement and the interactions um for those of you who missed the beginning i had announced earlier that um i broke ten thousand plays on my podcast yay um so as a thank you to everyone i'm going to be doing a calendar giveaway on the weekend nothing that's going to be crazy you guys are already following me so it's basically like to tag Tag two people. Every person that you tag will be um, one entry into the draw for the boudoir calendar. And it'll be a signed calendar by moi. Um, shipped out to you. You don't have to pay for shipping and handling or anything like that. You just have to join the contest. And then I will announce the winner on Monday. Additionally, um, my OnlyFans is being offered at a 35% discount um, over the Valentine's weekend, which is good for 30 days. Uh, and then again, I'm going to be doing the same thing for Steak and Blowjob Day or Steak and Head Day, which will be March the 14th. <laughs> um, Life with Gilly. Did you law and order where the rape invite for one person was shared with someone else came? Yes, I did see that scene. And and that's why I'm saying like it's it's really important to know who you're engaging with and who you're giving consent to because it does have the potential to go sideways very quickly so consent safe words aftercare three very important things when you are engaging in any sort of scene play or any intense sexual interaction with someone so 
Um, I hope that everyone is good. I hope that everyone has a great evening. I'm going to sign off early and uh, go take something for my headache, which is starting to mount. As you can see, my eyes, when my eyes start to get squinty, it's one of two things. Either I'm high, which I'm not currently, or I'm getting a migraine, which I am currently. <laughs> so um, anyhow, I hope that everyone is great. Have a fantastic Valentine's Day weekend to those of you who celebrate Valentine's Day. For the ladies who are doing their Galentine's Day celebration, big up yourself on Galentine's Day, which is February the 14th on Sunday. Um, I will be back next week with another topic. Of course, there is a new episode dropping tomorrow. It is the Love Jones Fuck Them Before they fuck you is the title um of course i'm gonna put out the links for that tomorrow um it'll be available on apple itunes iHeartRadio, uh spotify stitcher amazon podcasts and a whole bunch of other platforms that you can find those are just some of them um yeah and that's it so i'll see you guys next week